Blockchains have created new ways to earn passive income outside the traditional financial system. From mining to staking to yield farming, these are all new ways to earn passive income in crypto without doing things like earning interest in your bank, buying dividend stocks, bonds, or even real estate. And in today's video, I wanna talk about a new way to earn passive income in crypto that's coming onto the scene that could be a significant trend if executed properly. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this because every time something new comes out like this, there's huge incentives to get in early. Think about being a Bitcoin miner before it was popular or getting into yield farming back in early 2020. The gains were absolutely insane. But that's not the only reason that you should care about this. This is actually a technological shift that opens up new possibilities for what we can even do with blockchains in the first place. So I'm explaining everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, get ahead of the next crypto wave, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this new approach to making passive income in crypto. Now, again, there could be some good ways to make money with this, but the main reason I want to focus on this is because it's pushing the boundaries of what's even possible with blockchain. So what is it? Well, first, let's look at the problem that it solves. Let's look at some of the traditional ways of earning passive income with crypto right now, like mining, for example, or staking or yield farming, like I talked about at the beginning of this video. So with proof of work mining, like now these are some of the most popular strategies out there and they require two things, one of two things, either computational resources to run something like in Bitcoin mining or staking on Ethereum. And then number two, some cryptocurrency that you need to lock up in order to get you. So one of those two things or both. And so with any of these strategies, there's a big problem. Either your computational resources or your money is just being used for one thing at a time. But what if you could take your money or computational resources and use it for multiple things at the same time? So for example, what if you could stake your crypto and run a computer to earn 5% and then do that again and again and again with the same computer and the same crypto? And instead of earning 5%, you could do it 10 times over and earn 50% or 100 times over and earn 500%. Well, that's exactly what a concept called restaking is all about. Basically taking your money and your machine time and using it in multiple different places. And there's a particular project that's spearheading this effort in the crypto space called Eigenlayer. This is a project that's already amassed over $250 million in TVL. Lots of people are using it already. It's a serious project and big names in the crypto space are talking about this idea. And so this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. This is just gaining a lot of traction and I wanted to make a video so that you can know about it. So what is it and how does it work? Well, let's talk about the idea of restaking and exactly what's going on behind the scenes there. So restaking may not be what you think about whenever you hear that word. When I hear the word restaking, I think of basically like taking your passive income that you earn from staking and then compounding that back into your principal so that that grows and you earn more passive income over time. That's not what this is talking about. So what does it do instead? So let's go back to the Ethereum proof of stake model that I was talking about before, where basically in order to run the Ethereum network, you run a computer called a validator, okay? And then you take 32 Ether, your cryptocurrency, and you lock it up into the network and you run that computer to help run the blockchain, okay? But while you're doing this, basically you're waiting a really long time for your turn to propose a block and earn passive income for doing that. And you have a lot of cryptocurrency and computer time that's just running idle that could be doing other things throughout this process or accomplishing multiple purposes. And that's the exact idea behind Eigenlayer and restaking. You could use that same computational resource and cryptocurrency to participate in other things like running other blockchains or layer two scaling solutions for Ethereum or powering oracles or bridges, or data availability, or indexers, any decentralized process that needs your crypto and also your machine time, you could participate in these things simultaneously while you're running a validating node. So it taps into all this process of Ethereum and unlocking its potential to do other things besides just run Ethereum. And so if you were to visualize it, it would look something like this, where you're sitting in the middle and you're plugging into multiple protocols at the same time. And so going back to the example that I said a minute ago, what if you could earn 5% with your computer and your crypto on a blockchain like Ethereum by running the network, but then you could do that, you know, 10 times over on other decentralized protocols? Well, 
you can multiply that 5% yield by 10 to get, you know, 50%. Or if you could do 100 different chains and protocols, well, that would be 500%. The possibilities are endless to multiply your yield and earn additional passive income that you really can't do in other ways in crypto without the same types of risks. Now, of course, it'll take some time for that possibility to even materialize, but that's the upside potential of this type of solution and why I expect it to grow over time. Now, how do you actually do this? Now, before I present this part of the video, I always want to say, Nothing I'm saying in this video is going to be financial advice. You always have to be very careful when you're using new technology like this. There are significant risks, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So you can just go to the Eisen Layer website and click on Restake Now, and that will take you to the app portion of the website. So there's a couple different options here, okay? They have native restaking, which that's the method that I was talking about, like where you're running on a full-on Ethereum node where you're running a validator and you devote those computational resources to the network in addition to the 32 ether that you have staked. And you can basically create an eigenpod and go through that process to participate in eigenlayer. Now, but what if you say, all right, I don't have 32 ether to stake or I don't want to stake 32 ether and, and risk all those funds trying something like this, or I don't wanna go through the headache of running a validator or I don't wanna lock up my validator into something like this. Well, there's other options for you. So you can use things like Rocket Pool, Lido or Coinbase. So basically, these are just liquid staking tokens. So you can go to any of these websites like Lido.Finance, and basically you can take your Ether and lock into a smart contract. They'll give you back a token, which represents your stake in that. Basically, they're running a validator for you, and you'll get yield without having to have 32 Ether or run a validator. And then you can take those tokens that you get back and go through the application in Eigenlayer, connect your MetaMask wallet, and then essentially deposit any of your liquid staking tokens in this protocol to participate in liquid restaking. All right, so that's an overview of how it works and how you can actually use it. Let me talk about some benefits to this strategy and also some downside risks. I promise I would talk about those. So furthermore, benefits is that you don't have to be highly leveraged in order to do this strategy. So with things like, you know, staking or yield farming, you actually can, you know, use your cryptocurrency in multiple places, but you have to use leverage. So what does that mean? So let's say that you wanted to take one of these liquid staking tokens, you could stake your Ether, and then you could leverage that and then deposit it again somewhere else. You can basically take your tokens and then put them into a money market like uh, Aave, for example. You could borrow against it, and then you could go use that, you know, cryptocurrency to get back for something else. If you want to, you know, speculate on a new cryptocurrency or on more yield, that way you could boost it through this methods. But the problem is, if the principal value of the cryptocurrency drops too much, or something with the borrow interest rates goes out of whack, you could get liquidated and you could lose all of the cryptocurrency in this process. We've seen multiple people get blown up in this, especially in crypto bear markets, but you don't have that same type of risk with restaking, which I think is one reason that it's a novel idea that could get some significant adoption. Now, that being said, there are still risks associated with this. So anytime you're using blockchains and you're self custodying your funds or you're using a website that's powered by smart contracts, there's always, you know, risks of yourself, you being your own worst enemy and just losing the cryptocurrency that you are self-custodying, um, you know, getting fished on a website where they steal the money out of your wallet. Or there's always smart contract risk anytime you're putting money inside smart contract protocols. So th those risks don't disappear with this type of strategy. And I want you to be very well aware of those. But there are other risks that are unique to this. So with something like, you know, proof of stake natively on the network, you have a slashing risk, okay? So if you're running an Ethereum validator and your validator goes offline or you're not really doing your job of properly running the network or you even worse, try to become a malicious actor on that chain, you can get slashed. So basically what that means is the crypto country you're locked up, uh, you're staking it, you know, that's an incentive to do a good job running the network. And if you don't do that, then you can lose either some or all of the cryptocurrency if you deposit it into that. And if you do restaking, that problem multiplies. So if you're not fully compliant on any protocol that you are participating in, then you could potentially get slashed on any of these networks. So you're multiplying your slashing risk for every single thing that you participate in. So that's definitely a risk associated with this. And so the other potential risk here is actually with the Ethereum protocol itself. So Vitalik Buterin, the mastermind behind Ethereum, published a blog post a while back talking about don't overload Ethereum's consensus. So the idea here is that, you know, basically if you're running a computer and have cryptocurrency that's powering a network, that it should really be solely responsible for that. And then as you start taxing that and, you know, splitting it in multiple different directions, that that introduces risks into the protocol layer itself. He talks about restaking inside of here and why there could be, you know, 
problems with stretching Ethereum's consensus model too much over time. So definitely check out this article to get a better viewpoint of that. And that being said, there are risks associated with this, but this is a brand new way to earn passive income in crypto that's getting significant adoption that's really you know, not widely adopted as some of these other methods that have come in the past, like mining, like staking or yield farming. And there's lots of opportunities to get on these types of trends early. And I think there'll be lots of opportunities with this as well that could definitely blow up over time as we start supporting more networks that have restaking. And this is the type of thing that could blow up, especially if crypto enters into a new bull market phase in the coming months. I mean, who knows? We could be in the middle of it right now. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you excited about restaking? Is this something that you're going to participate in? Are you going to completely wait this one out? Do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's going to grow? Do you think it's going to just completely end horribly? I want to know from you. And after you leave that comment, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast with this technology as I am and you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of those free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step start -step to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Adapt University.